it's February 13th, 2024. Um, I'm in the ONE with the In God We Trust with the General George Washington and the first uh, President George Washington. Jackson's on the front of this Federal Reserve note with the United States of America. White House is still on the back. Um, 48 puzzle pieces uh, territory between two oceans, then like a river and tributary system of most importance. We've got a northern border, southern border, we're northern hemisphere, America. Um, I am listening, um, like, in God we trust, knowing that there is somebody in the O-N-E um, that listens. Um, and knowing that I would be number T-W-O to his O-N-E um, if there was concern or something that he should know about directly or whatever, in the whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, the sun has set now. I'm listening to... It, it's and, and, and I don't want to denigrate the importance of who he is, but there's... In, in in the series of rooms that I've been, I worked at the Imperial Manor. So, um, and that was a catering hall. It was in plain view where I was born um, before they took me home to County Queens. Um, and there I served many people at the catering hall. There was a man who showed up one night. I had carpal tunnel. Um, they threw several parties in this imperial manner. Um, I guess somebody could say it was a waitress job. Um, and I was in a tuxedo, um, out, uh, like a, a respectable waitress job in a tuxedo, full tuxedo. Um, so, and that was during college. So, uh, while I was there, there used to be something called a DJ. That was the music man, not at like country club quartet, but it is the we the people version of wherever I've been held. And um, this DJ, when he comes out, there's many different pieces of machinery. I, I don't know their specific names either because I've never DJed before. However, I've seen also on television, they explain it that there's like a mixing board, a spinner, a DJ. He's got to listen and then he does his DJ thing to make sure that when the stage is set and the wedding is on or the retirement party is on or the whatever that he's performing it in better class, the class I prefer to be in, it would be the maestro at the front of the orchestra. Um, but it's not the level that I'm being held at at the moment. And there is distinction between the two. So um, with that being said, I'm watching what's coming through the musical instruments being the Americans. S allegedly, they're Americans. Some, I could say, they fit the bill. Others, I am like, they're... Are, the away team is on the home field is what you're saying. Cause again, these are arguments I don't want to get into, but I'm looking at what's showing up for work while I haven't had the same luxury or ability. And, um, I'm listening now, this gentleman, um, he says something really frightening that we're being invaded from the North and the South in North America. Um, and something about foreign aid bill, they want to be paid. Uh, and then there's this 
other piece on News Nation that they did about calls himself a United States Air Force representative. And he was talking about fundraising for Ukraine and that they've cut back on his ability to fundraise for humanitarian causes. And I'm thinking to myself, looking at him, I mean, he speaks English beautifully. And I'm looking at him and I'm like, now, this is where this gets confusing. Because how do I know whether he's an adversary or whether he really does work for the U.S. as an at-home person. When I first arrived um, in 1978, they had said that there was something called the Vietnam War and a Korean War. The man looks like perhaps he could be either. Maybe he's neither. I don't really know. But they speak of the Pacific Theater and like, these are our adversaries. In the Atlantic, I don't hear so much. But in the Pacific Theater, I hear Pearl Harbor, their enemies, their all sorts of thing. But then they tell me, they put up here on the television, in the media, that he's a U.S. pilot. And I'm like, how is that even possible? I mean, the U.S. shares theater with the Pacific. So how could they tell me that he's... It, it Logically, it's just not, it's not making sense. I don't know how to make it make sense. But this is what it looks and sounds like. Something to the Senate called HR2. They're not taking it up. The $95 billion bill is going to the House. Mike Johnson ain't taking it up. So I hear you talk about need to secure the border, but I think the, the real world that we're living in is Republicans have clearly made the calculation we're not going to pass a dime until if and when Donald Trump is elected. Is that not the reality? No, I mean, we had a, a aid bill for Israel on the floor last week, and the Democrats tanked it. There were some Republicans, too, but there was a standalone bill to fund Israel. Bottom line is, reality in our country is that we are literally being invaded from both our southern and northern border. And why this isn't the top issue on the administration's mind, I don't know. He keeps talking about the importance of funding Ukraine. I get briefed every month on the Russia-Ukraine war. And I understand the strategy there to, to uh, you know, degrade one of our adversaries. But the bottom line is what happens in our own country is more important to Americans than what happens there. And I, we've been imploring the Biden administration to go on TV and explain to the American people why we should set. Okay, can we just set a standard for what an American is and what it's not? I mean, like, I know bread and circus. Oh, everybody celebrates the Super Bowl and FIFA, the MLS, the soccer leagues. No, we don't. There are people who visit the Americans, Americas, and then there's the Americans. So is if it doesn't look like it has ancestry in the North American monetary system, just for starters. Could Biden kick them out of the room temporarily? I don't know, put a date on it, whatever, perhaps. Just so we can clear the air amongst ourselves as to what we'll do and what we won't do and perhaps prioritize. I don't know, priori, I'm just, I'm thinking it's a good idea. Just as a suggestion, not that, I mean, everybody went to really fancy law schools and whatever, which is why I got nowhere and I'm like the biggest loser, but right. But I'm just as a thought, just from the middle of nowhere and it looking a whole lot less like America than when I originally arrived to. Um, so I go from this and then I go to um, an earlier mention. And this is this is what they're telling me got in the Air Force. And I'm like, here's the other thing, like American dad, why did I not get a seat in the Air Force or on a naval ship or anywhere else that's respectable to even get close to where the ONE was that I wanted or deserved, was it deserved like to be? If the measure of the bar is serving one's country, why wasn't I allowed that level to even serve at that level of service? 
And why was this, this next gentleman able to serve and get paid as part of the U.S.? Whereas I was not offered the same level of responsibility or even opportunity. I'm going to pause this for a second. So the first one, that piece was part of The Hill this evening. Um, this one is News Nation with McConnell McShane. In Europe. Mm -hmm. And there's got to be more creative ways for us to do this, um, whether it be, uh, oh, you yeah, know, well. the lend lease. Now, um, the man before said, why can't we get President Biden? And then all of a sudden it goes to here. House Democrats. So it's all of these voices and microphones and only one President Biden. And this looks like the away team that is temporarily staying in North America playing for the U.S. team. I don't know. Or the American. Like, again, I don't know how they in-house, like how they speak about themselves or reference themselves. But it gets confusing as to who's paying them all on what dime and who do they serve. A highly distinguished member of Congress, an Army Ranger, someone who has served multiple tours of duty and fought valiantly for this country in both Right. You get the idea, uh, that's live, by the way, on Capitol Hill, but Hakeem Jeffries is saying, essentially, Mark, Mark Lindquist, still with us from Ukraine, what you were saying and making that argument to the American people, and as, again, as I started to say, there's a lot of people who push back on that and say, you know what, uh, we're throwing good money after bad here, and this war's going on and on, it's a stalemate. You've heard all the other, the other side of it, so uh, pick up from where you left off. So now, I know how... County Queens behaves with persons that look this way. Um, and then I know what I've been taught with the Pacific Theater and with prior wars. And I'm really caught in this. Like. Speechless. Just absolutely speechless. But I'm listening to what the the media, M-E-D-I-A, is trying to package this as. I'm listening very closely, but I'm like, but the teachings in American history were with the Pacific Theater that Japan bombed Pearl Harbor. That's still like the going story of history my entire life. It's the story amongst the veterans. So I, when I hear them, them try to rebrand and repackage, I'm like, now, wait a minute. You know, if you, if you want to make a case that, uh, you know, this is a poor place for American resources, just like uh, Hakeem Jeffries was just saying there, the next step in this inevitable march towards Putin's quest for European domination is American boots on the ground. You know, a, a NATO five, a, a NATO protected Article five country in Poland stands right at the border of Ukraine. And if you want American boys and, and women to be protected from Russia's artillery barrage, then it is incumbent upon us to support the cause of freedom in Ukraine. I was once asked early on whether this is a proxy war. Right. And that's way over my pay grade, as we say in the military. But if it is, then wouldn't we as the American citizens want Ukraine to decimate our enemy, Russia, as much as possible without American soldiers on the ground? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I implore. I guess everybody it's one of the things is... How you structure it, right? I mean, I don't know if you saw what Donald Trump said. You probably did about NATO. Those comments got a lot of attention uh, the other day. Uh, but the other thing that w was maybe more interesting about what he's been saying is that um, if we're giving away money to, you know, to people like Ukraine, it should be in the form of a, of a loan, not a grant. And then people that you wouldn't expect, with Lindsey Graham has always been for uh, supporting wars overseas like this that he believes in. He's, well, you know what? That is a good idea. Do you think that's a good idea? Should we restructure these uh, this type of foreign aid or, or keep doing it the way we do it now? What do you think? 
you know, my best idea about how to fund the things that we need in Ukraine is World War II was funded by $182 billion of war bonds. And I would ask the leaders in Washington, why haven't we approached that issue? That's $3.1 trillion in today's dollars that American citizens reach in their own pocket to support the war effort in Europe. Mm -hmm. And there's got to be more creative ways for us to do this, um, whether it be, uh, you know, the lend lease that has been little used uh, from the White House. Um, but ultimately, I know that the American citizens can reach in their pocket and spare three to five percent of our annual defense budget for the cause of freedom on the well, eastern edge of the free world. Last thing, uh, Cordell else coming up, I'm sure he'll have a, a, a much different perspective on this. We'll get to it in a moment. But Mark, for you, you're in Lviv, you've been in Ukraine. Again, I don't think the public in America has been paying the attention, as close of attention to this as they were two years ago when it started. How are things now? Is this war basically a stalemate that's just going to keep going and going and going? What's your assessment of that? Forget the funding for a moment. Well, without the proper long-range artillery, long-range missiles that we have withheld from Ukraine, uh, we are unable to push back through fortified territory in Ukraine. That's why we saw a virtual stalemate to the front lines this last year. That really, the front lines haven't moved for about 16 months because we have failed to give you... Okay, so microphones are confusing me based on the complex and complexion and the different, like... What defines an alien? What defines a foreign adversary? How do I tell the difference between the home team and the away team that's here visiting? As far as communications go, I'm really confused. And I'm not able to find, like, st like stable employment not enough to care for myself, but there's people like this who are inside or claiming to be inside the military. Whose military? I don't know. Um, that gets confusing. But he's getting paid. He's also able to raise money for Ukraine to pay for their children. But I'm inside the home field the 48 puzzle pieces. There's the addition of the two to three, if we're counting on Alaska, Hawaii, and Puerto Rico for some reason, which is also confusing. So I'm, why are they all able to get money, paid, housing, food, stipend, purpose, and so on and so forth, yet I've been withheld from all of the above? Makes no sense to me whatsoever. Um, these are some of my concerns from here at this point. Um, I'm just going to pause this for a second and go back to the television for a moment. And personal story from today. Um, I already made mention that my son's home because of the snow day. Um, and they were on the New York City laptop system that the DOE or the Department of Education put out. My son had a full course day. Um, my mother at dinner at the kitchen table, my mother informs me that while Nucci completed his day, uh, two of his friends were outside playing in the snow, which I thought was really weird until Lewis said that on the television, they were speaking um, about something and something happened with IBM. So I'm going to look for that piece on the news um, for whatever happened with, because like IBM was before Microsoft, before whatever, they were like the space agency, like before privateers, and crowdfunding and stock brokerage and IPOs and whatever else they do in the finance department, like IBM was like, I mean, it was Rockefeller or like Astor territory. Like it was like the most elite elite before there was like a Bezos or a Elon Musk or a whoever else thinks they're really rich and important. 
Like there, it was, it was the household name was turn the lights off. What do you think we are? Rockefellers? Right. I mean, like that was the, that was around the house. That was the, it was, they really meant it because they could barely keep the lights on when I arrived. But that was the household name. Um, again, I grew up Glen in the Glen after being moved from Queens to County Suffolk. Um, so I'm going to pause this for a second and try to pull up the IBM mention. Okay, so this is what this remote learning looked like. Um, children on the, what I mean, I as a kid, when I would go to sleep nap time, and dream in whatever the vision of the future was that I was so frightened of. It's here. And now these children are on what I used to call the cereal boxes with keys, the really thin ones, not the kind that are around the house. Not Lauren. to be confused with those that grew up with parents already at NASA level, knowing what a cell phone was going to be and what a computer was going to be like. I didn't grow up under those conditions. New York City schools got off to a rocky start this morning. Some students were delayed because they could not log on into their virtual classroom. Schools Chancellor David Banks blamed IBM Systems for the glitch, saying so many people logging in just overwhelmed the program. IBM works with the city to help validate users and make sure only students and teachers are logging in. Chancellor Banks says they tested the system ahead of time. And when we did that, everything I worked out fine. That's why I'm concerned about what happened here and IBM's response that uh, we we didn't realize, you know, uh, over 900,000 kids were going to get on at the same time. Duh. Th th that's what this was for. Well, that's what the chancellor said first and then later admitted that IBM did not participate in an earlier practice run. Eventually, IBM added capacity and everything was up and running for the students. The company issued this statement saying, in part, that they regret the inconvenience to students and parents across the city. Well, despite the storm, pol polls remain open. So that's the televised version of whatever was going on at IBM level. Um, I'm going to go back. And, um, President Biden seemed really angry today. I don't. Uh, I guess he got an angry phone call. Um, and so at the beginning of the Hill, they mentioned that, which I'm going to put on. Um, so I'm going to pause this for a second. Okay. Billion dollar foreign aid package that would send money to Ukraine and Israel. For Republicans in Congress who think they can oppose funding for Ukraine and not be held accountable, history is watching. History is watching. History is watching. Failure to support Ukraine at this critical moment will never be forgotten. Meantime, uh, Johnson's counterpart, Mike Johnson, the House Speaker, has basically said that he's not going to put this bill on the floor. And so thus, even though the Senate passed it, Mike Johnson saying it's not coming up means, again, something happened, but did it. Mitch McConnell responded this way, saying, quote, We've heard all kinds of rumors about whether the House supports Ukraine or doesn't. It seems to me that the easy way to solve that would be to vote. Joining me now is the Republican congressman from Tennessee, Scott Desjardins. He is a member of the... So there's that. Um, then there's this... Um, there was a song... Um, I was listening to something about the South Shire. I don't know what that is. South Shire. I don't know. And then Haley from Toronto. And I'm like, and it, again, it's the Sam Hunt. So I don't know what that means in like the real big wide world of things. Um, it's things I haven't discovered yet. They're, they're keys to someone's whatever, but I don't know who's or what. Um, it's star 1978, star 8378, Nicole Caterosa, it's Earth, solar system, Milky Way, universe, galaxy is broken. It's Bayside Station, Bayside, New York, 1361. 